From the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks, this is Studio One. Hi everyone and welcome to Studio One. I'm Avery Hagasag. And I'm Will Biernat. Today on the show, the holidays are quickly approaching and many people are scrambling to find a simple, delicious recipe to share. Today we'll show you how to make a dish that pleases all tastes. Also, any smartphone user has been to a public place and signed onto a wireless network. However, your eyes may not be the only ones looking at your personal information. We'll tell you how to keep safe. But first... A recent report by the Senate Intelligence Committee accuses, accused the CIA of using brutal interrogation techniques on detainees. These techniques have been called torture by critics. The CIA is refuting the claim, saying that torture is clearly defined and they were never given the approval to use it. The CIA also claims there were many flaws in the way that the report's author analyzed testimonies from detainees. Time magazine has named the Ebola fighters as its person of the year. The doctors and nurses were given the title for their work in West Africa during the heat of the outbreak. The issue features five covers with one honoree on each cover. American Kent Bradley is one of the doctors that is recognized. There was a wide group of people who were considered for the title such as Vladimir Putin, Apple CEO Tim Cook, and even Taylor Swift. If you think twice before walking alone at night, you're not the only one. Gallup reports more than 37% of Americans do not feel safe walking by themselves after sundown. That number has remained steady for almost a decade. Women and young lower income people feel the least safe. Many of those who were polled said they don't even feel safe in their own personal neighborhoods. Safety experts say that there are many preventative measures that people can take to feel safer. By being aware of your surroundings, being aware of what's going on around you, maybe the environment that you're in, um, you're going to carry yourself better and that could uh, warn off a lot of threats. The buddy system is still an effective way to remain safe. Even though crime rates have been falling for years, cultural perception of danger is keeping the same amount of people indoors at night. Some healthy foods are commonly known as superfoods. Even chocolate can have certain benefits. A study from the Columbia University Medical Center finds people between the ages of 50 and 69 improve their memory by eating cocoa flavanols. These flavanols are an antioxidant extracted from cocoa beans. They increase blood flow to the brain, which helps improve memory. But don't rush to the candy store just yet. A person would have to eat seven large chocolate bars a day to see a change in memory. Internet security is a hot topic these days. We found out how your privacy could affect where you drink your hot beverages. Come for the coffee, stay for the company. At least that's the way it used to be. Nowadays, free Wi-Fi brings in the data-starved public more than the roasted bean aroma can. I would like to think everyone would still come in, but I doubt it. <laughs> Mobile hotspots continue to pop up and Wi-Fi is turning into a must for businesses like this. I mean, we wouldn't even be able to run without the Wi-Fi either. Public Wi-Fi zones are bursting with data, and network passwords lull some users into a false sense of security. You can see key logging. You can see uh, the screen, for example. You can remote in if you're on the same network. So it's really easy to do that kind of stuff. Unknowingly sharing information like this is shocking to some. I, I wouldn't be happy if it happened to me. I don't know if I would use public Wi-Fi if I knew that was happening. Luckily, steps can be taken to secure your data. One hotly debated tool is a VPN, or virtual private network. What this does is it encrypts your data, and internet providers won't see every single uplink that you're doing. They won't see your bank, they won't see your university, they won't see all these things. They'll just see a single connection to the virtual private network. VPN apps can be easily downloaded to your mobile device and provide the user with a high level of data security. However, while some applications can help combat data breaches, others can be easily accessed from outside sources. It's important to adjust your settings accordingly. Only permit each app or each cloud system the level of privacy that you feel comfortable with. Personal information is a lot like your favorite hot beverage. Chances are, you don't want to share that latte either. Pass also urges users to store information in multiple places. He says local storage is still a secure and respectful way of keeping data safe. And that's the news for now. Now, I know a lot of people after work in school go to public places to do more work. You know, I personally know a lot of people that use public uh, routers, so it affects them as well. And they can be dangerous. Yeah. So, thanks, Will. Yeah. Let's head now to Scott Wolf for the weather news. Scott? Thanks, Avery. So, over in the northeast of the United States in the New England area, they just had one of their first nor'easters of the season. So what a nor'easter is, is it's a large low pressure system that forms over the Atlantic coast. 
So it forms further down in the central United States. You have some cold air that pushes down from the north that runs into the warmer water that's coming from the Gulf Stream. And so these differences in temperatures leads to lots of instability, leads to a really strong low pressure system. So it has lots of rain associated with it until it gets far enough north and then it starts dropping snow. So areas like New York City got three inches of rain, Massachusetts got five inches of rain in some areas, but then it keeps moving further north bringing more snow with it still. Albany, New York got 23 inches of snow, Vermont got 20 inches of snow, Maine got 15 inches of snow. So why is it called nor'easter? It's because of the wind flow patterns. So the wind spins counterclockwise around a low pressure system and so this counterclockwise motion means that over the land the wind is coming out of the northeast. So wind out of the northeast means that it's going to be called a nor'easter. Now these nor'easters are actually relatively common in this area during the winter. So not uncommon to get large snowstorms like this. So a little bit of snowflake science. All of the snowflakes, their shapes are actually formed by the way that the molecules interact with each other based off the hydrogen and the oxygen that's in the water molecules. But here's your weather question of the week. What geometric shape is the foundation of these snowflakes? We have four-sided all the way up to eight-sided. So these shapes, that depends on the molecules. But Avery, try and think back to elementary school and remember what shape your snowflakes were that you were cutting out. All right, thanks, Scott. Now we're going to head on over to Will Biernett, who is going to tell us a story that might help you keep warm during the winter months. Will? All right, thanks, Avery. With technological advances and innovative inventions, buying brand new products is attractive. But when it comes to clothes, the story can be quite different. I guess when you just never know what's in bags, boxes, totes. We'll get people. I had a friend come yesterday. She's like, here, I have some stuff, but I need the tote back. OK, <laughs> just dump it. A task that can seem stressful is one lady's full-time job. <laughs> um, it's just fun. It's fun digging through bags and boxes because you never know what's going to be in them. After working seven years in the thrift store industry, Amanda Lennon has seen clothes change value as they change hands. You know, we live in a disposable world, and people are just getting rid of stuff, and one man's trash is another man's treasure. In the treasure pile, the ugly sweaters rise to the top, and people wear them voluntarily almost without exception. They're just sitting there like, I don't want to be here and my wife made me wear this. <laughs> well, everyone can't rock the penguin sweater, but this holiday season, what might be considered ugly is the new trend and people are coming to thrift stores like this to find their ugly sweater. Lovely snowflakes to candy canes and of course this has the double sweater with the vest. The ugly sweaters are becoming big business. Some people even buy them from cheaper stores and sell them for profit online. Go garage sailing, thrift store shopping, and they made close to $100,000 on ugly Christmas sweaters. So if you are in need of that one sweater for the party this year, I mean, how good is that? <laughs> you can find it at a place where your wallet doesn't have to suffer. Reporting for Studio One, I'm Eric Nelson Butler. A quick web search reveals that the ugly sweater business is booming. Sweaters range in price from $20 to designer sweaters for more than $1,000. And you know, Avery, it almost seems like the trend is that the uglier the sweater, the better. That is how it seems. Thanks, Will. Yeah. After working in a kitchen with Sonny Bono's daughter on the West Coast, one, of North Dakota, one North Dakota chef made her way back to her hometown of Grand Forks. Up next, she will demonstrate how to make one of her favorite simple dessert recipes. Closed captioning for Studio One is underwritten in part by NDAD, helping others to help themselves. To have the future you want and a career you'll be proud of, you'll need a great education. The University of North Dakota can get you there with more than 225 degree programs, preparing you for today's fastest growing high demand careers like medicine and health professions, aerospace, business, engineering, and energy. Schedule your campus visit today at und.edu slash go. Because to succeed, you need to be exceptional. 
At the University of North Dakota College of Engineering and Mines, classes have real life application. Mentors guide students. Our work improves quality of life by answering tough questions with creativity and innovation. The University of North Dakota College of Engineering and Mines, training tomorrow's engineering and geology experts today. At the University of North Dakota College of Engineering and Mines, classes have real life application. Mentors guide students. Our work improves quality of life by answering tough questions with creativity and innovation. The University of North Dakota College of Engineering and Mines, training tomorrow's engineering and geology experts today. Closed captioning for Studio One is supported in part by the Listen Center, enriching the lives of people who have intellectual disabilities with choices in community recreation. The menu during the holiday season can be a challenge. The search for the perfect dessert to top off a dinner can be daunting. Chef Heather Schneider is here with us to teach us how to make sweet potato cake. Thanks for being on the show with us oh, today, you're Heather. welcome. Thanks for having me. Now, you're fairly new at your position at the North Dakota Museum of Art. Now, where were you before? I was at Amazing Grains before. Okay. Um, what made you decide to move over then? Well, I just love the North Dakota Museum of Art. It's such a fun place. We have the cafe, but then there's a huge art studio as well <laughs> with lots of fun exhibits. Mm -hmm. We have um, a fun little shop there. I'm wearing a necklace there that we saw at the <laughs> shop. So it's just a great atmosphere and it was fun new challenge. Different food? Different food. Um, it's more of a restaurant vibe. So mm -hmm. we have fun specials every day, two soups made from scratch. It's great. So what got you interested in cooking originally? Well, I come from a family where we did a lot of entertaining, mm -hmm. so we had a choice. You could help clean or help cook, mm -hmm. and I decided I was going to help cook. <laughs> <laughs> now, I understand you worked out in a restaurant in California for a while. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about your experience out there and um, how you grew as a cook? Well, I was um, working at a restaurant, um, waiting tables to help pay for college, and mm -hmm. I just had such an interest of cooking that I was constantly had my head in the kitchen asking <laughs> questions. So finally the chef said, why don't you just start working back here? <laughs> so he was great and um, taught me so much, and from then on I went to all different ki kinds of kitchens and learned as much as I could. So why did you come back to North Dakota after being on the West Coast? Um, you know, my husband and I are both Grand Forks natives, and we were ready to settle down and start a family. And uh, come we back decided home. to come back home. Yeah. So what are you making for us today? We are going to do a sweet potato cake. Okay. Um, so we're going to take it to batter form and from there you could do a cake, cupcakes, mini cupcakes, okay. whatever you like. All right. Now I've heard of sweet potato pie but never a cake. Where'd you get this recipe from? Um, you know, I look online lots of different cooking blogs. This one I've had for a few years. I mm -hmm. think I took it from Food Network. Oh, okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right, go for it. All right, so we're going to start with our dry ingredients. All right. We're going to do two cups of flour. Now this is pre-sifted. That is an important thing. Okay. Uh, you want to make sure your flour is nice and sifted so you don't have those little clumps. Mm -hmm. And we'll do about a cup and two thirds of sugar. Okay. So you're doing all the dry ingredients first. All the dry the first. Ones. Okay. And then our leavening mm. agent is a little bit of baking soda and uh, baking powder. Mm -hmm. And then we've got some salt here. Okay about one teaspoon salt and then two teaspoons cinnamon and that's going to give it a lot of good flavor. All right. Now, um, do you stir this and then add the wet stuff? Or you yeah, so I'm going to get it nice and incorporated here, make okay. sure everything's mixed in. Okay. Yeah, the flour does look a lot thinner. Yeah. When it's so then you don't, um, and at this point you could sift it too, um, but I like to do my flour first. Okay. So there we go, we got that all mixed together and then we okay. move on to our wet. So is there a step that could make or break this recipe? Yes, if you threw everything in the bowl and mm -hmm. then tried to mix it, you're not gonna get it evenly mixed. So it really is key to separate the wet and the dry. Okay, gotcha. 
All right, so we'll start with our sweet potatoes and we'll add these. Now, how do you know if you have a good sweet potato? Well, you know, if you're buying a fresh sweet potato, you want to make sure that they're nice and firm, no um, noticeable blemishes. But I have to tell you, I've done this both ways with fresh and with canned, mm -hmm. and you can't tell. So save yourself the trouble and just do canned. canned. Okay. All okay, right. and we've got four eggs here. No, those, you said those are farm fresh eggs? Too? Farm fresh eggs, and that's one thing with ingredients. You want to get the best ingredients you can. So mm -hmm. you can tell with these eggs that the color is just so much nicer and mm -hmm. um, the freshness is there. So why are great ingredients important, do you think? That's what makes the difference in your food. Mm -hmm. You know, you have one cake, another, what's going to make the difference? It's going to be what's in it. So I'm all about the fresh ingredients. Um, mm -hmm. Fresher the better. Great. All right. So, and then we have one cup of canola oil here. This is what's going to add, if this cake is so moist, mm -hmm. that's what's going to give us our moisture. And then we have a little bit of vanilla here. Okay. And this is kind of a little secret ingredient here. <laughs> Whenever I add vanilla to something, I also add a little bit of almond. Why because is that? it just gives it this extra flavor. Sometimes okay. you can, you, you wonder what it is and just makes it a little more sweet. So you do this for cookies and everything that you Everything add? that has vanilla, just mm. a little almond too. <laughs> So then we mix this up, okay. make sure that it's well blended. And absolutely, you could do this um, with your if you have a KitchenAid mixer at home. But I think it's fun to get a little workout when you're cooking, too. <laughs> Why not? How come you're not using a whisk? Uh, we definitely could use a whisk here, too, if you'd like, um, just to make sure it's evenly blended. Okay. Now, how many can this cake feed? You could do 48 little um, cupcakes if you wanted, you could, mm -hmm. or you could do 24 regular cupcakes. Okay. And um, it bakes off in a 13 by 9 inch pan, too. Okay. All right. So that looks pretty well blended there. Perfect. So now we're going to slowly add the wet to the dry here. So you don't do it all at once? Just right, if you get a nice well there in the middle, okay. put it in, and then we'll just kind of... Um, slowly blend it together. You don't want to overwork it either. That's how sometimes you can get some tough, mm -hmm. tough cakes. No one wants that. Okay. So we just fold it all in till it's smooth, and then you can bake it off. And you could top it with a nice frosting. You could do, I like to do a maple cream cheese frosting. Yum. With some maybe candy pecans on top. Okay. Or if you don't want to do a frosting, it's really nice with some dried cherries in there oh, with okay. the pecans too, and it makes um, kind of a nice bar, bar that way too. Do you do your icing homemade? Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Looks yes. yummy. Yeah, so it's as easy as that. Um, and this stores really well in the fridge too. If you wanted to just bake up six fresh cupcakes one day and then save the batter and do some fresh ones the next day, you could do that too. Okay, great. Ice cream with it sometimes? Oh, that would be good. <laughs> some Perfect. vanilla ice cream. Um, so. We have a picture up here of the final product, so those are the little cupcake versions, correct? Mm -hmm. And how big did you say the cake was? The cake can be in a, either a 13 by 9 inch pan, or you could do two 9 inch pans too. I've done it as a layered cake. It presents really well that way too. Okay, great. Do you serve this at the North Dakota Museum of Art then? We do. We've had this on our dessert menu, and uh, people love it. Holiday special, or is that kind of a regular thing? Uh, we keep a rotation. I think it's nice in the summer too. Okay. Now back to when we were talking about ingredients, um, is there one ingredient in your cooking that you tend to use for everything? You know, I really like um, cumin. It's kind of this nice little accent that will give anything kind of a depth of flavor. Mm -hmm. So just a little bit goes a long way. Now, is it a popular, is it a popular you know, ingredient? No, I read somewhere that it is the second most popular spice ahead of pepper. Oh. Goes salt, cumin, pepper. I would never guess that. I know. All right, well, this looks delicious, and I wish that we had a cake we can make right now. <laughs> Next oven. time. Or right. come see me at the museum, and you can have some for dessert. Perfect. All right, thanks, Heather. Coming up, some people dread waking up early to go to work. We'll meet one man who goes into work at midnight without a single complaint. Studio One closed captioning is underwritten in part by Options, your disability information source.
It's not the size of the woman in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the woman. To have the future you want and a career you'll be proud of, you'll need a great education. The University of North Dakota can get you there with more than 225 degree programs, preparing you for today's fastest growing high demand careers like medicine and health professions, aerospace, business, engineering, and energy. Schedule your campus visit today at und.edu slash go. Because to succeed, you need to be exceptional. North Dakota is facing challenges in healthcare delivery. The University of North Dakota School of Medicine and Health Sciences is building a place to help meet the state's healthcare needs. In addition to a new structure, we're also building interaction between healthcare professionals while building a workforce through expanding class sizes. We're inspiring our youth to engage in healthcare careers and exploring ways to reduce disease. It starts here and ends here, building a better future for North Dakota. Others live to their full potential, improve clients' mental and physical well-being, excel in one of the top healthcare careers of the future. Occupational therapy students at the University of North Dakota experience high-quality education in small classes. Have to come to 45 degrees, okay. even in a normal motion pattern. Your healthcare career begins at the University of North Dakota. If you would like to attend a live show, go to our website at studio1.und.edu. It's the most wonderful time of the year. With the holidays just days away, the question of the season is, what are you asking for? We wanted to know what you put on your wish list for Santa this year. I simply asked to come home for the holidays. I'm stationed in the Air Force, and thankfully they let it happen, so here I am. My kids, I usually ask for gift cards, you know, to like salons and stuff like that. And but most of mine is giving. <laughs> Health for us, uh, for us and our family, and peace in the world. A record player. It's not like I want something like a gift. My maybe the gift will be will be spend time with my family. A little sewing machine. I would like a new dog, but I have to convince my husband and my cat that we should do that. Nothing special. I'm happy with what I have. Actually, a girlfriend would be great. I'm 31, so anybody interested, let me know. That's really it. Uh, or an Xbox would be great. A comment from our Facebook page from Shakopee, Minnesota said, Money for a vacation. And Jill Ann from Bridger, Montana said, My daughter Allie has three wishes for Santa. A set of bleachers like the big school has, a brother or sister, and an iPod. A trip to work on Friday or Saturday can be a drag to some people. We found one person who uses every weekend to work on his passion. Late on a Saturday night, while most college kids are sleeping or having fun, Ben Harris is doing something a little different. I just love baking, do it all the time. Ben is a student at the University of North Dakota who also bakes bread for Dakota Harvest Bakery in downtown Grand Forks. Ben's work routine, though, is anything but 9 to 5. On a normal evening, Ben leaves his apartment around midnight and drives to work. Once Ben gets to the bakery, he turns on the oven and starts to prep for the night ahead, from weighing out the dough to mixing it all together. All with a smile on his face. So sit there. I, would not, um, I would not do any other job at 12 o'clock at night. After the dough is prepared, the bakers knead it to perfection and place it in the oven until the bread is just right. While the process may seem simple to some, the baking actually takes the entire night. You know it's going to be like a 10 hour shift, but once you get into it, you're like, I'm baking bread, what does it matter? <laughs> bakers here at Dakota Harvest pride themselves on taking their time in order to perfect their craft, but also 
in giving back to their community. I help out the mission whenever uh, they uh, uh, need extra bread. Through Ben's baking, he is able to impact his community one loaf at a time. And when it comes out well, you feel great. And everybody's buying it around town. And you're like, I'm baking for Grand Forks. Like, this is great. <laughs> I love it. With photographer Eric Nielsen Bratley, I'm Alex Stadnick, reporting for Studio One. Dakota Harvest Bakery prides itself on using many ingredients from farms all across North Dakota. All right, thanks, Will. We're going to head on over to Scott Wolf now, who's joining us with our studio with a final look at the weather. Scott? Thanks, Avery. So, we're looking at a pretty nice holiday season coming up here. Warmer than average temperatures across most of the United States, particularly though in the West Coast, the Northern Central Plains, and out to the Great Lakes region. Cooler than average temperatures along the Gulf Coast, so if you're going down there for Christmas, you might be expecting a little bit cooler than uh, you would want for your Christmas break. Looking at drier than average temperatures, Montana and the Dakotas. We're going to have wetter than average conditions uh, from California out to Texas and Arkansas. Now that brings us back around to the weather question of the week. What geometric shape is the foundation of snowflakes? And that is actually a hexagon. So if you were in elementary school and you cut out your snowflakes in an octagon, that's not actually exactly how a snowflake is supposed to be. So Avery, I was mentioning earlier that there's an angle. It's actually 105 degrees. All right, thanks Scott. And that's our show for today and the last of the season. Thanks for watching us this year. We'll be back with more news and stories in February. As always, you can follow us through social media or get more information on our website. From all of us here at Studio One, have a great holiday. See you next year.